Hey Spanish 2 class, I am holding Anna right now out of necessity because Isaac is having a tantrum and I'm working from home so, you know, it's better that I intervene than I not since I have the power uh, by being here to do that. So, <laughs> um, this is actually going to be a really short lesson. We are going over um, chapter 2 of Advanced Spanish Step by Step and we're not going over the whole thing, we're just going over uh, the first portion of it. And it's not going to take very long because most of the concepts are review. But what we're going to be focusing heavily on right now is um, the being verbs. So, estar and ser. And the interesting thing about this board, um, currently I have all the forms of estar in the preterite and the imperfect. And then I have all of the forms of ser in the preterite and the imperfect. Now, you may recall that the preterite is the simple past. Um, it's just saying something happened, boom, it's done. It's a finite action where you're conveying the idea of it being finite or complete. Whereas um, the imperfect is a little harder to wrap your head around, um, but it's going to be more the idea of like an ongoing action. Um, often it's used to set the stage, like I was cooking when the spoon fell. That would be I was cooking in the imperfect and then the spoon fell in the preterite. So anyway, you can review that on your own, and there's a lot of review in this lesson. In fact, this chapter is nothing but a review of these tenses, so it's a really good one to end the year on because we're just um, solidifying what we already know. Um, <clears throat> so, this entire board, all 24 forms of ser or estar, are all going to be translated as was or were. <laughs> and that's literally it. There's no difference in English between all of this. Now. There is a difference in sense of meaning in the conditions of like when you would use them, but in English, it's confusing for us to deal with all this because we just have one word, which is was, to describe all of it. Um, so on the flashcards I gave you on Quizlet, I don't even have like was and then flip it over and, you know, estuve or was, flip it over, estabas, that wouldn't help you. So instead I just have, um, for example, I would write like on one side, just like if it's in the, if it's in the flashcard deck, of preterite for a star, then it would just say yo, you flip it over, estuve, tu, flip it over, estuviste, and so on and so forth. Um, now, when you're using these in the past, um, it just depends on what, what sense you're trying to convey, whether you use the preterite or the imperfect, whether again it's a finite action like the preterite or something that you want to convey the idea of it being completed or whether it's something that's more ongoing or you want to convey the idea of it being a process that's going to be the um, uh, imperfect. Now, <clears throat> um, in the case of estar versus ser, this should all be review, but when do we use estar and when do we use ser? Uh, we're going to use estar for three temporary kind of situations. One of them is location. Um, the other one is going to be um, changing mood or condition. And um, what was the third? I'm blanking because I'm distracted by the noise outside and the baby. <laughs> um, mood. Oh, look, I said location. Okay. Mood, changing condition, um, health. Health was the third. Okay. Yeah, I remember. Health um, or mood slash changing condition. Uh, ser is going to be all other forms of um, was in this case because it's past, but all other uses of being verbs are going to be said. Now, there's one thing I'm going to point out, and only really one thing, and then I'm just going to turn you loose to, to um, do your homework and, and study this lesson. And that is they have a section where they talk about um, options for using estar and ser interchangeably in one circumstance, and that is um, when you are describing something um, in terms of an adjective. is what we call a predicate noun or a predicate nominative, where you say subject is adjective. And um, so, I don't know, Bob is nice. Um, the dog is brown. That kind of a format. But here, we're using it in the past. So, um, in, in the present, we would say, you know, um, Bob, I guess bold, uh, Roberto, that would work. Um, Robert, uh, es simpatico, and um, so like, you know, a lot of these um, adjectives we would just use, um, you know, we would just uh, use ser, unless it was a temporary one, like 
Um, we could say Bob, or we could say Esta. Um, cansada, or cansado, sorry. Cansado. Bob is tired. So we would differentiate in the present tense between um, the one or the other. Now, in the case of the past, when you're dealing with um, how something was, the lines get a little blurred if you're in the preterite tense, specifically the preterite tense. So I could say something like this. Um, la fiesta. See, or her feet in the way, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> if I want to say that it was boring, the party was boring, aburrida. Uh, that's boring. I could actually choose between saying um, la fiesta, it's a he, she, or it, so estuvo, which is a form of estar, or I could choose to use um, uh, fue, which is a form of ser. Isn't that strange? You can actually choose. And um, most Spanish speakers, they point out in the book, don't differentiate at all between the meanings of those two. Like the majority of Spanish speakers um, will say it doesn't really matter, or if there's a difference between the sense of using estar or ser to describe something in the past, um, like this, um, like they'll say that if there is a difference, it's either insignificant or they can't really even articulate it usually. But the basic idea, if you ask somebody who is opinionated about this and they're a Spanish speaker, they might say that if you use um, the imperfect, like la fiesta estuvo, that what you're saying is you're emphasizing the circumstance, you know, the circumstantially it was boring. Um, whereas if you say fue, you're emphasizing that it's categorically boring. So this party is of the category of boring things, I would say fue. But if I say that due to the circumstances, this party was boring, um, or emphasizing just kind of like the, the ongoing process of time of it, I guess, then I would say estuvo, the, the estar form. So, um, but do you really need to know that? No. So I'm bothering to point it out specifically to say that when you see it in the book, don't be alarmed by it because it's really not that significant. Most Spanish speakers won't even be opinionated about it. They won't think there's any difference. And that is my cue. It is time to uh, end this video. Uh, feel free to uh, let me know if you have any questions during the week. And again, this will be our last video because next week is only reviewing the material, um, even though it's covering a new uh, portion of a new chapter. It's all review. And on top of that, um, your homework is largely going to be preparing for the final exam. So thanks very much. I will release you now.